I will say that uh, on the way in today, I was kind of I wondering, that, I was curious as how many of you would be paying in this conference. Again, I want to thank you all for being here. Again, I want to thank you all for being here. Yep. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank you for being here this morning, and I also want to thank you for the work that you did yesterday. I, mean, I, I know that uh, I didn't participate in as many focus groups as you did yesterday, and I left here exhausted. Uh, so I can only imagine how you must have felt. But thank you so much for that work. What I'd like to do this morning is, uh, is again, thank you for being here, but also to thank our funders uh, who helped us put on this conference. Uh, first, I want to thank Lumina just for funding the Diplomas uh, Project in general. Here in San Antonio, so that we can move forward with this collective impact. But I also want to thank the funders who are helping us put together this conference. And, uh, that would be uh, the P16 Plus Council of Greater Bear County, represented by Judy McCormick, the San Antonio Education Partnership uh, uh, that is run here by uh, Ira Bettis, who sits in and who has been hosting us here. Uh, I also want to thank the uh, mayor's office, which is represented by Gene Russell. And we know that it's important to have leadership involved in this. I'd like to thank the College Board, uh, Ismael is also here, thank you for being here, and uh, TG, uh, represented by Jacob Frey. Uh, again, all of these, uh, I said this yesterday, but I've been involved in several um, initiatives focused on Latino student success and student success in general, and, and these individuals are always at the table, so uh, I want to thank you again for, for the, what you do and, and your support. I'd now like to turn it over to Judy McCormick. Well, I'm the lucky girl this morning that gets to introduce Jacob and Jeff, and I'd, I'm going to give you, a, if you don't know Jacob, you've heard some of the things, but he's the Vice President of Student and Institutional Success for the, does anybody know what TG stands for? Texas Guaranteed. Oh, you guys are good. Texas Guaranteed Student Loan Corporation. We affectionately call that TG. So he leads TG's philanthropic and community service department. He's always been a friend to us. And just to let you, another tidbit that I thought was interesting, did you know that he designed and le leads TG's public benefit program, which since 2005 has provided more than $50 million in grant funding to advance college access, success, and research? So I thought that was fabulous. I did not know that. It was good. Also, at this time, I'd like to introduce Jeff Goldhorn. He's the component director for leadership and instructional services for the Education Service Center Region 20 in San Antonio. He's responsible for leading teams in the areas of leadership development, principal and teacher certification. He knows everything, mathematics, science, English language arts. But the other thing is, is he provides leadership to teachers and professionals in the K through 16 level level group. So we are very fortunate to have both gentlemen here to talk and I think Jacob you're going to go first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Judy. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So to use a, a breakfast analogy since I see you eating tacos. I am, I am that salsa that comes in your little bag and Jeff is going to be all the sustenance that's inside your tacos. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to spice it up a little bit but really you You'll want to wait for Jeff because he's, he's got all the substance and all the sustenance that we need for the discussion. Uh, if there's a timekeeper in the back, keep me, keep me honest for 10 minutes. I apologize. I, when you put a microphone in front of me, time just seems to evaporate. So keep me a 10 minute mark. Um, good morning, everyone. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. Let me first recognize the, the, the brain trust to this convening because I think it is so critical. Um, as you get to know me and perhaps a little less about TE, but more about me. I am a, I am a, um, a consistent critic of the, of the disconnect that I think exists uh, between higher education and public schools with regards to our students. And what I have witnessed here in the last day and today uh, really is profound about the work that we do in public school for our students that is so fundamentally important. And I would tell you, it is, it is my pleasure to be here and my commitment to you on behalf of TG is that we will have equal engagements with our colleagues in higher ed so that we can all be committed to the success of our students. Uh, I cut my teeth in public school education policy in DC. I think uh, Lloyd from, from Southwest introduced Southwest as a recovering, non-culture going school district. I, Thank you. I, I introduced myself as a recovering lobbyist because that's what I did for, for 10 years. 
and, and more recently I do it in higher education, and, um, and it's a pleasure to be here. Let me just uh, say that we have, we have a grand opportunity <coughs> to make connections between policy and practice that affects our students at several levels. Today and in the coming months, we have an opportunity to bring public school education, San Antonio specifically, but perhaps even in the state, and higher education together to have a conversation about student success, along the same metrics and along the same conversations we talked about yesterday. And I think that's very real, and I know that the brain trust that, uh, that put this thing together with the mayor's office and with uh, San Antonio Education Partnership with the P16 Council have that very much in their expectation that we will bring uh, our colleagues from the academy to, to the same table, to the same conversation. And so we have an opportunity to do that in San Antonio and to allow the rest of the state to see how it can materialize because too often we talk about these issues that are independent of each other and sometimes we bring them together, certainly the P16 Council is a great model for that. We bring them to each other, but the, the courageous conversations that you have had yesterday those are very tough conversations, and they are equally as tough, I would say, for your colleagues in higher ed, uh, but they are even tougher when they're in the same room, and so we aspire to have that with you. But let me suggest also that together, public school education, leadership, curriculum, cur administration, and yes, our wonderful friends in IR in terms of data, because we must have data, and our colleagues in higher ed, we have an opportunity to frame statutory policy that will affect our students for certainly a decade to come, and I would argue perhaps for even a generation to come. Let me tell you what I mean. Everybody in this room ought to be familiar with the Texas Closing the Gaps plan. It is the master plan for higher education for the great state of Texas. It is a plan that was adopted in October of 2000, and it will expire in 2015. I'm a little sad that it's going to expire because I used to make uh, jokes about it being about dental work, not about higher education, but so we'll have to come up with a, a new joke. But closing the gaps is going to expire. And what that means is that there is already a conversation that is occurring across the state and specifically at the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board and specifically in the Texas legislature with regards to what might the next master plan for higher education look like. What are the components that those plans would include? The current plan, for example, includes a very specific goal for enrollment. We will enroll 630,000 additional students in post-secondary education from the baseline that was established in 2000. What that means in actuality is that we're probably going to be enrolling about 6% of our population in post-secondary education in any given year. Some of the conversations that have already occurred in the, in the legislature is that perhaps we shouldn't set such a low bar for ourselves, that our enrollment goal shouldn't be the average of the rest of the nation or the average of the rest of the top 10 states, that perhaps what we might be able to do is aspire to enroll what is the threshold of the leading states, states like California that has closer to 7.1% of their, of their population or age group uh, enrolled in post-secondary education. So those kind of conversations are gonna take place. Other conversations that I think very much will have a huge impact in how we think about student success has to do with how we fund higher education. We talked about this uh, in the last session, and I think that there's a conversation that's going to happen in this next session that will lead up to the next master plan. There are serious conversations about funding higher education based on performance, and performance is a proxy for graduation, for completion for degrees attained and degrees achieved. This is a very tough conversation, I would tell you, for those colleagues in the academy who have operated on the current formula for decades and perhaps generations. And those conversations, I think, lend themselves for us to work across the, not the political aisle, but across the spectrum so that we can say to our colleagues here in public school, how can we work together so that we can all ensure that degree, that certificate, that diploma for our students, and so that we can all use the same data, the same metrics, and the same system to achieve that. And so that master plan probably will not see a framing until 2014, and a vetting process in 2014, and of course, not to be executed into 2015. But I submit to you here today, 
that you here in Bear County, you here in San Antonio, have a wonderful opportunity to frame that. Not to lobby, not to influence, but to frame that. To say to our policy leaders in the state, we have something special going on in San Antonio. We get it. And I know you get it. We get it. And rather than having a policy framework that is perhaps created in other, other parts of the state, or frankly other parts of the country, we get it, we understand. We understand here, for example, that we have a disconnect, as I learned yesterday, between how we identify our students in public school and how we identify our students in higher education, and those identifiers are not one and the same, and therefore we're not able to follow those students all the way through. We have an opportunity to frame that, to get your colleagues, not just your colleagues in higher education, but your colleagues in nonprofit organizations, your colleagues in the P16 Council, and frankly, your colleagues here in policymakers to say, in San Antonio, we understand that we have the model and then do that. Because you're going to have to live, and I say you, we're going to have to live with that for another 15 years in terms of the next master plan. At the federal level, you also have yet another opportunity. The Higher Education Act, which forms basically the better part of federal policy and federal funding for higher education programs will expire next year. And so we will see next year, and we've already started to see some of that this fall, we will see next year discussions, debates, some considerations and proposals of reauthorizing the Higher Education Act. Now, I love the Higher Education Act. It was birthed in the same year that I was, 1965, signed into law by a fellow who I think very highly of, Lyndon Baines Johnson from Texas. But the Higher Education Act is about to be 50 years old. One might argue that we don't need to reauthorize, Greg, the Higher Education Act. <laughs> we, might, we might have the opportunity to develop a whole new framework for higher education. Yes, the reauthorization is a vehicle because we need a vehicle but we might have an opportunity to completely rethink higher education in the 21st century to meet today's students, today's students' needs. And those three entities are coming together at the right time. Master plan for Texas higher education, reauthorization, or a new framework for federal policy in higher education, and then what you're doing here this week and what you're doing here in San Antonio can inform both of those and inform both of those so that we can get it right locally because that's what's important. Not only because we think local control is important, but because we know that locally is where all the best ideas and all the best innovation occurs and then have that in frame uh, state and, and federal. TG is a nonprofit organization. We do not lobby. However, we do commission research and we do get involved in policy discussions and we will be happy to be one of your conduits, among others, to tell the folks what is going on in San Antonio and how that can inform state policy with regards to higher education and, frankly, public school education and state policy with regards to the federal role in higher education. Texas is heavily dependent, I'll say that one more time, heavily dependent on federal student financial aid. Something like 75% of all direct aid to students in Texas comes from the federal government. So we have a huge stake in what happens here at the nation's capital, and we have a wonderful opportunity here. And I didn't see a 10 minute mark, but I'm gonna cut myself short because I really want Jeff to, to come in and talk more about the substance. One minute and uh, of, um, of uh, there is a handout before you. It is a, uh, it is a brand new report that TG just published this week. In fact, we published it we published it specifically for this, for this uh, meeting, uh, but perhaps um, my folks back at the office are going to tell me that I, that I released it one day too soon. Um, as everyone who all knows, through the leadership of Greg Darnieder and Secretary Duncan, we now have access to FAFSA completion data real time, relatively real time, right? Two week, <laughs> a two weeks lag. TG has published this report specifically for our Texas colleagues, for our Texas high schools, and we wanted you to be the first one to see it. This contextualizes the reports that you are already seeing, that you are already accessing, that we need for FAFSA completion. 
that contextualize it with regards to student financial aid, and there will be a URL. I'm supposed to go low on this one because it's not live, but there will be a URL, it's in page three, where you will be able to access that data live every two weeks come spring, and then monthly in the summer and in the fall, and then we will, to those reports that you will be able to access live, we will then affix relevant information, relevant data, relevant charts that we think are important for the FAFSA completion process. So on that very long-winded introduction, and hello, and thank you, I get you to Jeff. Okay, good morning. So Jacob and I were talking uh, and kind of planning for this morning. You know, one of the things that is exciting about where we're heading with our strategy as a state is really looking at what's working locally and what are the opportunities locally. So before I start with that, just a couple of words about myself. First off, like many of you, first generation college student, um, went to school from the age of five and just finished at college, at Texas A&M College Station at the age of 35 in uh, 2005, I guess that was. Um, so I was in school forever. Just paid off my last student loan um, <laughs> last summer. My wife's first generation college student. Her mom had a fourth grade education. Her father had a sixth or seventh. Um, she's the only one out of six children that went to school, went on and got a master's degree, and she's in her 15th year as school principal in Shirt Cibolo. My kids, 10 and 11, I enrolled them in the Texas Guaranteed Tuition Fund when they were born, and I paid off both of their college tuitions last summer as well. Wow. Same time I paid mine off. So this is work that I'm really passionate about, and if I had the opportunity to peel off all the other stuff that I do and just do this, this is what I would do, because I believe in it, and I think it's, it's just critical for the, not, you know, the success of our community, of our state, of our nation, and really the global economy, if you really look at the big picture. So as we were talking and you know, start, starting to think about how big of a priority this is for us, the question came, what are we doing at the regional level? So at Region 20, you know, our charge is to support the educational community. I've been there, uh, this is my 11th year. The last three, we have been at the table a lot more with higher ed than, than what we have ever been. And I know many of you are in that same place where we're having these P16, P20 conversations and uh, that's exciting, and there's still a lot of work to do there. So what are we doing at the regional level to address this priority? If you look at, again, we looked at the SA 2020 goals. <laughs> Certainly everything we've talked about over the last day is in alignment. And then, of course, with the big goal of diplomas, uh, we're in alignment. So I'm not going to review that, but here's the slide that is interesting, right? So you'll recognize many of these. So we have the San Antonio Education Partnership, of course, P16+, plus, SA2020, uh, SA CAN, Cafe College, you know, where we're sitting today. UTSA has an Office of P20 Initiatives. Texas A&M San Antonio just started an Office of P20 Initiatives. Of course, Pathways is another thing that's happening, what's getting uh, K-12 and higher ed together to talk about implications for curriculum and aligning curriculum. Uh, GenTech is another great partner, you know, Fortunately, from the work that uh, happened with P16, they chose to kind of set up shop here and use San Antonio as their launching ground because of everything that was happening in San Antonio. Uh, the Keystone Conference, many of you have attended. That brings K-12, higher ed, adult ed, uh, prison system, um, all together under one roof and talks about kind of some common things that are going on. In fact, we had uh, Dr. Conley was our keynote last year meeting with our, my direct client group tends to be like the assistant superintendents for curriculum, curriculum directors. Those are the people that I engage with mostly. And they asked, what are we doing? What are different school districts in the region doing around college and career readiness? So they asked us to kind of put together a forum to have that conversation. So we did that. Uh, the first one was last month. We've got two more scheduled. And it's really round tables. Um, we're looking at the next one, maybe doing some sort of a speaker panel. Last time we had three school districts share some things they were doing. Judson ISD shared their college and career ready plan. Um, SAISD and East Central shared what they were doing around AVID because they want to know. They want, they want to, you know, it's very collaborative in nature. They want to hear what's going on, how are we working together. 
this initiative here is another example, four specific school districts coming together with that same idea. The three that I'm going to kind of highlight um, for you this morning are Avatar, College and Career Readiness Profile, and the College Algebra Initiative, which comes out of SAMSEC, which is another group that meets, a bunch of volunteers get together once a month for breakfast. It's the San Antonio Math Science Education Coalition, and they talk about how do we address the STEM pipeline in San Antonio. Um, and I'm going to talk just a little bit about what they're doing. I believe they might uh, share a little bit more the next time this group convenes. So in that regard, Avatar. Um, and I do want to mention in the back, Reve Schaefer. Reve, raise your hand. Okay, Reve is with uh, Region 20 as well. And she'll be here this morning, so if there are more details you want than what I talk about today, uh, Reve will be here during the uh, uh, gallery walk for an hour. So if you want to hear a little more, she, she will be happy to talk with you, or either one of us will. This is a partnership between Region 20, P16+, Plus, Alamo Colleges, Harlandale, our good friends in Harlandale, and uh, UTSA. And these groups come together, focus on, in the center, student success. So how do we work together as a K6, P16 group and focus on student success in preparing students for college and careers? The goals of this group are to expand awareness and create regional vertical alignment initiative to prepare and support students around college and career readiness. And all that means is getting people around the table to have really hard conversations about where our curriculum aligns, where it doesn't, what are your expectations in higher ed, what are your expectations in, uh, at the high school level. And then to identify and implement strategies to close that gap here at a regional level. Right. So these students at Harlandale High School um, that will go to Alamo Colleges, we're trying to help clear the path for that. Identify processes to assess and celebrate regional progress and then to share best practices. This is a pretty new initiative that just started this year. The idea here is to um, work with math teachers. We're, we're focusing on math, going down to the middle school level, middle school through high school, and having that vertical conversation and looking at, you know, getting down to the point where you're looking at Make, building awareness around what are our Texas essential knowledge and skills, helping the, the folks at the Alamo Colleges understand what those are about, looking at the college and career readiness standards. You know, sometimes this is where the hard work occurs, just digging into those standards and really getting to understand them and thinking about what are the implications for me as a college algebra teacher as a result of these standards. Looking at, you know, specifically the curriculum, having conversations about classroom instruction, textbooks, and grading practices, at, at the secondary level, and what does that look like at Alamo Colleges? Um, looking at student support services, you know, dual credit issues. So these are the kinds of conversations. What we're, our observation is it's not until you get the teachers that are working directly with the students engaged in this dialogue, because all of you get it. That's why you're sitting in here, right? But, and this is hard work. And if you've ever tried to facilitate a group of secondary and post-secondary, that's difficult work, right? It takes some skills to facilitate that conversation. So this is what Avatar is about. The goal is we have English teachers um, observing and watching this process, and then the goal is to replicate this with the English departments a year later. So I applaud Harlandale. This takes, a, this takes commitment. So you know they have to release their teachers because these conversations have to occur usually during the day. I know we do, I think we do some things after hours too, but you know, it, so it takes substitutes, which we have a little grant that we're helping to pay for that, but the bottom line is those teachers aren't standing in front of the uh, students on those days. So but that's the kind of dialogue that this is creating, um, hopefully then changing practice. So the other one I want to talk about briefly is um, this is a really exciting Texas College and Career Readiness Profile Planning Guide. And just a little history on this, this came out of a grant from the Higher Ed Coordinating Board that Austin Community College received. And they brought together stakeholders from all over the state. I sat on the committee that helped to design this tool. And we had everybody represented from higher ed, business and industry, um, two-year institutions, um, uh, K-12 institutions, and so on. What this is, this profile guide, really relates to what we've been doing here for the last day. 
this is a campus profile guide. So you would actually develop a college and career ready <coughs> profile for your school. And this guide will help clarify, deepen, and operationalize district campus understanding of college and career readiness. It assesses where you are around college and career readiness using all kinds of tools, data being one of them, um, student perceptual perceptions, parent perceptions, teacher <coughs> perceptions, as well as hard data. And it was designed to support local improvement to give something, a structure that you could create a plan around so you're not starting from scratch, basically. The vision of this guide is to deepen understanding of CCR and to operationalize, I think that's the key word, a college and career culture in Texas schools. So through this grant that Austin Community College received, they partnered with Region 13 in Austin, um, and that's kind of where this is living right now. And it's a, it's a portal. Um, I'll show you a little bit of what, what the end looks like, and then Reve will actually have it pulled up if you want to take a look at what the end product looks like. It's an actual action plan um, unique to each campus that engages in this. There are master trainers at, I believe, 18 of the 20 service centers across the state. So that's how we were trying to deploy it, to get it out into all the regions of Texas. It's based on Conley's work. So you have key content knowledge, key cognitive strategies, key learning skills and techniques, and key transition knowledge and skills. And most of you are familiar with Conley's work. What this tool does is it assesses you around those areas, and it's yours. You know, it's, it's just data, it's information. But it shows, okay, so we're weak in you know, key cognitive strategies, like strategy number two over there around uh, rigor. Um, if that's an area that shows up, then it points you to some resources, most of which are just free resources that we've kind of vetted for you, and says here are some tools that you could use to help. You know, so that strategy there would fit in to this profile tool, for example. You can also add your own uh, resources and tools to this profile. So it's based on seven research-based principles. When they went out and looked at research around what are schools that are effective around creating a college and career ready um, <laughs> culture, what are they doing? And so it looks at create and maintain a college going culture. So first off, schools that have been successful know how to do that. Secondly, it looks at the core academic program. That's where that rigor shows up. If you don't have the rigor in the core academic program, then it's nice to have the posters on the wall, right, the, the college poster, but what is, what's happening in the classroom to match the level of rigor that's <coughs> happening in our institutes of higher ed? Um, it, it teaches key self-management skills. That came up several times yesterday <coughs> to give the skills, what the CCRS referred to a lot of times as those cross-disciplinary skills. You, schools that are effective explicitly teach those skills. Um, it looks at, or it also, schools that are effective we talked about this one a lot. We clear the path. We help kids apply for college and then make that transition successful. So are you intentional about that? Do you have processes in place? And looking at the conversation yesterday, many of you do are on your way there to helping clear that path for kids. So that won't be the thing that holds them back. Schools that have been successful create assignments and grading policies that align with college expectations. Well, you can't do that unless you do like Harlandale's doing, I'm just using your example again with Avatar, sit at the table and talk to the university and colleges and talk about what does that mean, what does that look like? And ooh, this is a big one that Texas has been working on. And good or bad, the 4x4 is here, and one of the, one of the reasons 4x4 came around was we need to make the senior year meaningful and challenging. Okay? All the other implications that, can, that have come out of the 4x4 I understand, but that's one of the issues there. And then this last one I thought was perfect for what we're talking about today and yesterday. It's about building partnerships and connections to post-secondary post programs and institutions. So that's not just with post-secondary institutions, it's post-secondary programs, which is what this is, which is what that one slide that had that list of things. It's building those partnerships um, together. So the profile guide is based on these seven principles. It takes you through a process as a campus where you First off, you build a college and career readiness foundation. Based on Conley's work, you lay that foundation, create awareness around that so that people understand what it takes to be college and career ready or to have an organization that is college and career ready um, and intentional about building that culture. Then it gathers data. So it recommends some data points, but it also says, what data do you already have available? 
and then you plug that into the profile. And then it re uh, you review the campus data gathering prompts. You engage in leadership discussions. So there is a requirement this happens at, you know, you have representatives from the entire campus. One of the non-negotiables is that the principal be involved in the, that conversation. Prioritize goals, which is what we've been talking about here. Stephen Covey calls WIGs, your widely important goals. You can't do it all. So what are you going to pick to focus on with this tool? And then engage in comprehensive action planning. Then how do you move those goals to action, right? So it has a template that you create an action and then move that action forward. So this is really exciting. This is really new. So new that uh, while we've been trained in it, we haven't done this with anybody yet. Region 13 has one staff member that has been out sharing this work at conferences. And so it's getting a lot of buzz right now. Uh, he presented to the Texas Higher Ed Coordinating Board um, a month or so back. So great resource that you might consider if you're looking for a way to kind of organize your plan. And the last one I'm just going to touch on briefly, and then I'll take any questions, is this college citywide college algebra initiative. We're involved in that. We're not leading that. Uh, Dave Splittick, retired superintendent from <coughs> Lack Lackland, and Dr. Joe Laser, retired from UTSA, these two guys that just kind of volunteer and do this work. They have a lot of interest in this. But here's the, here's the premise of this. The Citywide College Algebra Project, I'm going to give you the short version. It will take um, every high school in San Antonio and identify two teachers that can teach college algebra. And if they don't have the certification, the 18 hours they need, it will provide the 18 hours for them or the master's degree, put two at every campus. These campuses, along with the Institutes of Higher Ed being Alamo Colleges and UTSA, will agree on a common syllabus. So everybody's teaching the same course. The, the course is focused on fourth year, account for your fourth year math. It will focus on non-STEM majors, because our STEM majors are taking more advanced math their fourth year. It will give them the college algebra credit that they need to go into Alamo Colleges, for example, not have to go into a remedial course. And because that is the, we know that's a roadblock for a lot of our students, especially our non-STEM majors, right? So this was actually part of a grant that they had submitted to the uh, NSF that didn't get funded, and they said, we're doing this anyway. So they're working right now with all the superintendents. I met with all the Bear County superintendents last week. Um, the goal is to get MOUs in place right now, which that's the sticky part. But I met with Joe Laser last, or this week for breakfast, one morning this week, and he said that he believes this will be um, ready to go December, January timeframe, as far as a formal announcement in the MOU agreed upon. So this is really exciting. This is a local initiative. You know, these are the kinds of things in talking with uh, Jacob and hearing um, Greg speak a couple of times now, you know, it's what's happening at the local level. What are you doing as a, as a learning community to move some of these things forward? And a lot of it's about clearing the path, getting the right people at the table, and then having the people in the background that can clear the path for us um, to move some of this stuff forward to action. I met Joe several years ago. He's been talking about this for years. It's hard to do. You know, it's finally getting some momentum that it needs to uh, carry forward. So there are several slides on that. I'm not going to talk more about that because, I, like I said, it may come up in the next uh, forum that you do um, that has the higher ed focus. So this is the big plan um, for our city. We'll have improved the odds of success for all of our students, and we'll be a leader in attacking college readiness problem. And again, this focus, if you're, if you're looking at one area of focus, their focus is college algebra is the uh, block for a lot of our students. Okay? So our charge, I think collectively, is to leverage what we've been referring to the last day or so, that, that collective impact. You know, and how do we forward that action and forward that momentum? So synergize on behalf of students in Bear County. We, you know, we are collaborating as a 15 independent school districts in the city of San Antonio. The level of collaboration is uh, really exciting to me. Um, again, at the service center, I've seen it move from a little more of a competitive environment to a very collaborative one. I mean, as far as among the school districts and between the school districts. 
they meet regularly. Our curriculum directors uh, and assistant supes meet regularly. Our superintendents do. Our math directors, science directors, they're coming together and working together in a lot of these because we know we have a lot of mobility within the city, right? So how will we do this? Again, following this model, we identify our WIGs. What are our wildly important goals? What some refer to as kind of that low-hanging fruit. And that's what I think we'll end with today by the time you leave here today. And then Covey would say, what are your scoreboards? What are your metrics? Easy metrics, ones we all agree on, as we talked about yesterday, but ones that are uh, data that is easily accessible and that is just in time data. And then move it to action. You know, and I think that's what this conference is about, is really those last three things. District perspective city perspective and then you can kind of go out from there. So that's kind of three three things that are happening at the local level that you know are, I think are very new but have a lot of uh, potential and it's exciting to be a part of those. Reve on the first two on Avatar and the profile tool. Um, Reve is working with both of those and has a lot more detail so if you want to stop by and hear a little more about either one of those um, please do so during the uh, I think it's the 10 o'clock session. Okay, so I think I have about four minutes. So are there any questions I can? There's our contact information, by the way. Certainly. So the no? yeah. So the question was related to ESC 20 taking a role in helping to facilitate that conversation around rigor. We Absolutely. did we did launch a rigor series today. Actually, I was supposed to be training it, but Tori Austin's picking it up. And today's session is using um, Daggett's framework on rigor and relevance, those quadrant D moments in teaching, and the college and readiness standards, and building. And then also the participants will build a, a common definition of what rigor is. It's really messy work, identifying rigor. Yeah. And part of that series, we also have uh, identifying rigor in the classroom walkthrough. So we'll, we'll do that through that forum, too. I think that's a great idea just to have that, keep that conversation alive. And then um, the other part of your comment was continue with the forum to bring each other together to talk about best practice. Yes. So
but as a former school administrator, uh, it's very difficult for me to be equipped, or I need more to be equipped to roll that into the people doing the evaluation of the lecture credentials and authors and PDOC evaluations and make sure that we're fostering rigor in the classroom. The yeah. teachers have to do that messy work, but I have to know what, to what it looks like. Mm -hmm. That a worksheet doesn't automatically mean it's a, a level one on web depth of knowledge. If it's a high level worksheet, maybe a science lab, a, a multi step college algebra problem, it could be uh, a level three, level four, whatever the metric we use to determine rigor. Yeah. Yeah, rigor, what we found is we looked, did a lot of literature review and found a lot of definitions of rigor. Um, Daggett's and Blackburn seem to be the two that we're kind of landing on right now. Um, okay. And of course, the depth of, depth of knowledge work. And it's messy work, but it's talking to school leaders that are in classrooms doing walkthroughs and doing observations. And how do, they, how do they make an informed decision about rigor, what rigor is? And then how do they have that conversation with their teachers to increase their knowledge or improve their knowledge around rigor? That's a Certainly a focus, and uh, I appreciate that, and we will continue that charge. Good. Thank you. Okay. I think I'm out of time. One more. Jeff, Sam. in that same meeting, we did create more work for you. Okay. <laughs> um, we talked about, you know, we know that each month the content coordinators or you know, specialists have a meeting, and we were talking about the possibility of within those meetings that there's always a piece I'm touching on the college readiness and the rigor of versus it just being uh, you know, a business meeting. Yeah, I like that. So in the core content meetings, yeah. to be intentional about including a CCR or CCRS piece and a rigor piece as a kind of a thread through those meetings. That's a great idea. Reve, help me. Will you, will you capture that for me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in closing, um, I appreciate the time this morning and just know that, you know, just as was pointed out, if you have an idea or something that you need from us, um, there's our contact information. Let us know because that's our goal is to figure out what are the needs and then how do we kind of pull our resources together to, to support the K K-16 education community. So thank you all for your time this morning. Thank you, Jeff.